Put your trust in the scientific method. Put your faith in the scientific method. I have enough faith in the scientific method. Science. Ooh, la di da. Two plus two equals five, my t-shirt says, for extremely large values of two. Now that's extremely important because in fact classical logic, such as two plus two equals five, or is four, it can equal five is wrong. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Something can come from nothing. You're so wise, but like a miniature Buddha covered in hair. You can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever yeah. it is, it's very, very simple. You've never had a profound thought in your life. I mean, <laughs> why is that funny? I think The God Delusion is actually a rather funny book. It's intended to be funny, and I, I think it, we get a lot of laughs when... <laughs> well, um, we get a lot of laughs, and many of the laughs come from the bits that are often described as strident and shrill. I think it's a bit funny to be... It's not a strident and shrill book. It's a... It's a humorous book. Trying to define nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 here's the thing. Now, I'm just, uh, <laughs> no, no, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and he, he's written a book on exactly that topic of how you can get something from nothing, and I shall be questioning him about that. Of course it's counterintuitive that you can get something from nothing. Of course common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. That's why it's interesting. It's got to be interesting in order to give rise to the universe at all. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. Uh, uh, uh. I thought of that one too. Better try again. Science is making a pretty good fist of doing that. Uh, Life is now completely solved, barring the details. That was Darwin's contribution and Darwin's uh, su successors. First, there were the plants. They developed into animals which ate the plants. The animals were small, but they grew. And the larger animals ate the smaller animals. What does that mean? Now, it is very mysterious how the universe came into being. It's a deeply mysterious and interesting question. And, and can I just interrupt? It's an old question, a very old question. Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century was asking the same question. He said there must have been a time when no physical things existed, but something can't come from nothing. That was his view. It's just well, been repeated by us. Something era. can come from nothing. This is great stuff. I could make a career out of this guy. You see how clever this part is? How it doesn't require a shred of proof? And most paranoid delusions are intricate, but this is brilliant. Um, when you have um, matter and antimatter and you put them together, um, they cancel each other out and give rise to, to nothing. What Lawrence Krauss is now suggesting is that if you start with nothing, the process can go into reverse and produce matter and antimatter. The, the theory is still being worked out. It's a very difficult theory, mathematical theory. I'm not qualified to answer the, the, the question, but what I am sure about is that it most certainly is not solved by postulating an intelligence, a creative intelligence, who raises even bigger questions of his own existence. That certainly is not going to be the answer, whatever else is. Part of an intellectual elite. Um, the, the trouble, well, there are many troubles with Richard's uh, teachings, but a, a fundamental one is that he dumbs down God and he soups up nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm circuited to be logical and yet not to offend. That sometimes poses an insoluble problem. He, 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 can, he continually talks as though God is some sort of upmarket figure within space and time. Now, from 450, 500 BC, uh, where with the Greek uh, philosophers, God is outside space and time. God is necessary, self-sufficient, uncaused, unconditioned. That's the hypothesis you've got to uh, wrestle with. The second thing is that Krauss says nothing about uh, uh, the Big Bang coming out of nothing. Uh, and he, it's, admittedly, he comes clean 
uh, on about six pages from the end of his book, and I don't know whether Richard has read it that far because he gave it uh, a, a foreword. Uh, what he says is, is uh, what, he, what the Richard is describing as nothing is a sort of a, a mixture of particles and perhaps uh, a vacuum with electromagnetic uh, forces working on it. That's uh, what Krauss is talking about under the heading of nothing. And there's a very good uh, review of this in the New York uh, Times. Not a pro-religious paper at all. Uh, where the, Krauss is absolutely um, denied and, and demolished. Although, uh, uh, especially by his, his supporters claiming that he says things come out of nothing. He, he doesn't say that. I have to be logical. You can, you can dispute exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. Uh, I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, it really wasn't that great. <laughs> and why is that funny? How dare you! <laughs> well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> soups up nothing to be trying to define nothing why is that funny face these soups up nothing to be trying to define nothing why is that funny face 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 face